Hello everyone, my name is Ralph Carter and today I'm going to show you guys how to configure a single interface one arm firewall uh, cluster or a group of firewalls um, service graph with symmetric PBR and this uh, deployment is very popular um, you know for when you want to for example um, inject a firewall or a group of firewalls in the path of like for example between uh, different subnets okay um, and, and Cisco ACI pretty much makes it very very simple to do that so um, what I'm going to do today is let me go to the topology here to kind of go through it a little bit more in detail so what I did was I created this um, this this diagram or let's call it a design of what the end state should look like now Obviously, this is more for a lab environment, but I have used this architecture for um, other customers, customers that wanted to be able to um, review the traffic flows between devices or, or I'm sorry, between um, endpoints, more specifically between endpoint groups, okay? And this um, solution with ACI allows you to actually redirect traffic between specific endpoint groups uh, so that either you have more visibility into what's communicating between uh, endpoints or you know for access control so for for our scenario here I'm going to basically set it up so that the firewall um, actually takes a look at the different traffic flows and makes decisions you know whether to allow it or block it right so what we have here is um, just kind of going to go through the different constructs. So we have here is um, our SG tenant. Okay, uh, within the SG tenant we have our SG VRF, um, and within the SG VRF we have a you know typical three tier architecture. And um, I'm I'm kind of showing your 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 typical three tier web app and database architecture um, specifically to. Um, kind of go through these different use cases, meaning uh, what I want to do is I want to be able to, uh, by default, provide the capability of any endpoint group communicating with any endpoint group for that traffic flow to be redirected to a firewall, okay? But I also want to be create uh, bypass scenarios where, say, for example, um, if web talks to database, then I don't want it to go through a firewall, and I want it to just to kind of leverage the the native um, native uh, contract, right? And then the other use case scenario I want to be able to create is um, let's say any endpoint groups that communicate outside of the tenant or VRF, for example, with my uh, data center one core WAN or switch here, right? Um, that traffic, I don't want it to go through the east to west firewall either, right? Um, so, you know, one may ask, well, why wouldn't you want it to go through a firewall? Well, um, in, in previous engagements, I like to kind of keep things simple. And um, if there is any firewall requirements that has to occur at the perimeter layer, then I would just swap this um, data center core switch out with, for example, a firewall, right? So there would be a layer three out connecting to a firewall and then that firewall um, would be able to police or, or control traffic that comes from um, any um, north any north south traffic let's just call it that way all right so kind of going on uh, go, go through this a little bit more in detail um, again we have our sg vrf and we have our um, sg a and p and our bridge domains uh, defined with default gateways as well as our endpoint groups Okay, so we have our EPGs for uh, web, app, and database. And then we also have our Cisco UCS environment. I'm not going to go through the interface policy groups or how the UCS is connected. All that is uh, pretty straightforward. Um, I just want to kind of highlight that I have uh, for these endpoint groups, I have different um, port groups defined on the vSphere environment. And then obviously a virtual machine that consumes um, each respective port group. So I have uh, port groups created with VLAN 1240, 1241, 1242, and each of the uh, respective VMs mapped to those port groups. Okay. Um, and if anybody wants to know, these are actually static bindings. I, I didn't get a chance to do the VMM integration, although I can easily show that as well. Um, it works the same way, whether it's with VMM integration or with static bindings. 
Uh, within the VRF, our, uh, VRF, I also have um, a service bridge domain. And this service bridge domain doesn't have an EPG. It does have a default gateway assigned. Uh, and I'm going to show what that looks like. Um, and this is basically where these firewalls are going to map to. Okay, this is where um, the consumer and provider uh, connectors are going to uh, be part of. Okay. Um, before I get into the firewall, I just want to kind of go over the layer three out. And um, I have an SG layer, th SG WAN layer three out that's basically bound to this VRF, uh, along with an all nets external EPG um, with a classifier of a quad. Um, uh, quad zero route. Okay, so basically that says that any traffic that comes in um, uh, are classified or as external subnets, a part of this EPG. And again, the reason why I'm using this is just because I want to show the use case where a different contract uh, would be leveraged instead of, for example, the firewalls. And this layer three out um, here is my node profile. Um, I am doing eBGP with the with the data center one core, which would be the WAN and you know, the internet, etc. is behind it. Um, here's my interface profile I'm doing BGP, um, and um, in this case, the that core WAN is connected using the virtual port channel um, um, policy group. Um, and here's the IP address. And so I already configured this connection. It's there. BGP is running. Everybody's happy. Connectivity is, is, is out to the, um, uh, if you want to test internet, it, it's all available. So that communication is there. And again, all these uh, bridge domains are um, mapped to this layer three out. Okay. So um, their subnets are being advertised out to the core and, um, and other routes are being advertised back into the um, SGVRF routing table. So um, we also have our firewalls. So we have two Palo Alto um, 3020 firewalls. They are, um, even though I'm kind of showing them as a cluster here, they are independent standalone firewalls. Okay, um, in my lab environment here, they're plugged into the same leaf switch. Um, but uh, I can easily uh, take one of these firewalls and put it into a different data center, maybe with multipod, for example, and then have them participate part of the same cluster. Okay. And when I mean cluster, I mean um, an L4, L7 device cluster. Okay. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like uh, when I configure it. But again, these firewalls do not share session state. They're not in a high availability pair between each other, although I can add HA. Uh, firewalls to each of them, right, to make them a, an active standby, for example. Um, in this case, they're just kind of independent firewalls, and, you know, I leverage, for example, Panorama to push the access rule policy rule set to them, so they're kind of similar. So, um, Ethernet 1.1 with a sub-interface of uh, 900, um, 1.900 is used to connect for my... Um, my service graph or device configuration. And uh, those interfaces are going to be defined as the uh, cluster interfaces. So uh, in addition, uh, part of the device configuration for the L4, L7 service, uh, these will be unmanaged because we are using symmetric PBR and we, we are using more than one node in this kind of configuration. So unmanaged is the only supported uh, mode here. Um, and it is going to be configured for go to um, and they are going to be physical. Nothing stopping um, me from configuring virtual firewalls. In this case, I wanted to do physicals because that's what I had available. But I do have customers that leverage a farm of virtual uh, firewalls as well because maybe they're less, less expensive and you can distribute the load intelligently across multiple firewalls. So it's definitely an elegant option um, and nothing wrong with it. But in my use case here, I am using uh, physical firewalls. The uh, service graph template is going to be uh, called one arm FW PBR01 route, routed, and then there's going to be a route redirect uh, to these um, core VRF firewall clusters. Okay, So we are going to have uh, three different contracts in this particular scenario. Okay, um, So the one of the contracts is going to be firewall inspect con, and all I have here is an any filter. Um, specified, right? So basically what I'm saying is that any traffic, okay, is going to be 
um, flagged for um, for this policy, okay, for this contract. So meaning in this scenario, I am um, applying this contract for VZNE to VZNE. So basically, this means that any endpoint group in you know within the VRF because the um, the scope is a VRF. Um, any endpoint group to any endpoint group will be able will be redirected via PBR to one of these firewalls based on a hash. Okay, that's a, a source and destination a product um, protocol a prototype. I think it was um, a hash. Okay, and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. Okay, and um, so by default, it's going to be any to any. Okay, VZ any any. Now, I'm also going to want to create some differentiated um, communication paths. So, for example, in my use case here, I'm going to also want to say, well, that's great but uh, for any to any, but I want to say for web to database, I want that traffic to not go through the Palo Alto firewalls. Okay. So, what I do in that case is I create another contract called DB Services Con, in this case, also using the same any filter. Okay. But in this case, the database services is a provider of that contract, and the web services is a consumer of that contract. Okay, and the third contract um, is on the AllNet's external EPG. I am providing the WAN out contract again with the same any filter, and I am consuming it with VZN. So basically, what this means is every EPG is going to be able to access the all nets external EPG, okay, on pretty much any port. Okay, this kind of provides any EPG access to anything behind the WAN router, in this case the internet as an example. Um, so now that I can, I'm kind of talking about all the VZNE and the EPG to EPG, what, what, what does this all kind of mean um, as far as like which which contract is going to be preferred? Like how how is the the uh, policy cam going to be deployed on, on the switches here. So what happens here is my default is going to be VZ any to any, right? This will be um, uh, trumped over, uh, trumped by this DB services con be for communications between web and database because we have to look at priorities, okay? In this particular case, uh, VZ any to VZ any has a much higher priority, or actually, um, let's call it a lower priority. Although the, the 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 lower the number, the more preferred, right? So let's just kind of say that the higher priority is worse. Okay. So VZ any to VZ any communication has a higher priority than an EPG, okay? EPG to an EPG communication. So an EPG to an EPG communication will always have a preferred priority over a VZ any to VZ any. Okay, so this, so when the when the when the rules are evaluated, okay, even though that Web 01 falls into the same category as VZ any, and database falls into the same category as VZ any any, because this contract is an EPG to EPG contract scenario, it will be. Um, executed before this VZNE PBR. So as a result, by me putting in this DB services contract, any communication between web and database will not go through a firewall. Okay. In the same way, because I have an external EPG to VZNE, okay, this is basically EPG to VZNE that has a um, more preferred um, execution than VZ any to VZ any, right? The priority is actually uh, lower and, and more preferred than a VZ any to VZ any, but not uh, better than an EPG to an EPG, okay? So what happens in this case, uh, every EPG will be able to access the all nets external EPG, right? Because every EPG VZ any will be able to connect to the WAN out con, right? So in this case, what this effectively does is that Web01, App01, DB01 can access anything behind this core here, for example, 
the internet, et cetera, et cetera, right? Now you may ask, well, where's the security in that? Well, like as I mentioned before, um, all you would have to do is replace this um, core switch or create a layer three out with a firewall, right? And you would basically get the same result and the firewall would be your, your traffic cop, your, your north south perimeter uh, firewall, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm, I'm going to um, deploy the, the left hand side here, okay? Uh, and one other thing I wanted to mention is these Palo Altos, okay? They are configured, okay? 10, 116, 33, 100, and 10, 116, 33, 200, they're configured on the same subnet as the service bridge domain. And again, this service bridge domain can be stretched between two data centers if you have like a multi-pod deployment. So, um, so, uh, so what I have on each of the Palo Alto firewalls is a default route. And that's the point of this whole um, single interface, one arm firewall, because I don't need a, a, an inside outside or a trust or untrust. I don't want two interfaces. I want to keep it simple. I don't want to create any, you know, crazy routing on the firewalls on these east to west firewalls. So what I do is I have one interface. That interface basically belongs to this bridge domain. And on the Palo Altos, I have a static default route pointing to the default gateway uh, defined on the service bridge domain. Okay. So, um, again, the uh, SG tenant, VRF, some of these constructs are already created. I'm going to go, go through them, uh, the, the, the ones that really actually matter in this configuration. Uh, and then we're going to build out this um, L4, L7 device cluster. Uh, along with the service graph template, and we're going to deploy uh, the template to show how it all works. So let me bring up APIC here. Um, here's APIC. And I mentioned before that the SG tenant is deployed. Just to kind of give you guys a peek here. I have my SG ANP, right? Um, in the SG ANP, I have my app um, database web uh, EPGs. Uh, there's no magic here. I'm using a shared physical domain. Um, and then my static port bindings um, are set here. So um, in this case, I have my UCS fabric interconnects, uh, A and B, and then I'm doing a static binding with VLAN 1241 for app, and then 1240 for web, and 1242 for DB, right? Nothing crazy. Uh, with respect to networking, I have my uh, bridge domains. So again, I have the same bridge domains for uh, in my EPGs as my as my um, the, the same naming convention for my EPGs as my bridge domains, right? And uh, I can easily map them. Um, as I mentioned before, um, just clicking on this real quick, right? Um, you know, here's my, you know, slash 29 IP address configured, right? Um, and also it's associated to the SGUN layer 3 out. So these are pretty straightforward. They have their, you know, subnets um, assigned accordingly uh, to each of the bridge domains. Nothing magical there. Uh, and then what, what I had to do in order to get the L3 out PBR to function properly is in, in a one arm is I created uh, something called a service bridge domain, right? It could be any name um, that's just designating as a service bridge domain. And I defined that subnet on it. It was 10.116.33.1 slash 24. Um, it is a pretty straightforward design with uh, a couple changes. cutting some things off here. So one thing that I did was I enabled the L2 unknown unicast for flood, okay? And I disabled IP data plane learning, okay? These are some of the requirements that you would need to apply, uh, but respect uh, with respect to the L3 configurations, I'm not associating it with any layer three out because it really is not needed. And I am assigning that IP address and enabling um, unknown unicast, I'm sorry, um, unicast routing, okay? Um, and as I mentioned before, I also have uh, my SG WAN L3 out, right? It's pretty straightforward. Leaf interface profile, logical interface profile, etc. And then here's my external EPG, my all nets EPG. Um, and as I mentioned before, I'm just doing a quad um, quad zero route um, with external subnets for external EPG, basically saying that anything that comes in from the outside is classified as an external. 
um, EPG. And then as far as the contract, I have my when out contract as a provider, okay? Um, and under my, VR, uh, my VRF, I have my when out contract being consumed, okay? So VZNE, right? So this is basically my VZNE representation consuming the when out contract, okay? Um, so the other contracts I have are also the DB services, right? Nothing magical about them, right? It's, um, um, it uses the, uh, any filter. I also have that firewall inspect. I have a redirect subject, um, no designation for the L, uh, L4, L7 service graph yet. I'm going to have, have the, the actual configuration apply, uh, leverage this contract for the actual redirect. Okay, so the firewall inspect contract is going to be the contract used for any um, inner EPG or inner subnet um, inspection. Okay, and then obviously that went out contract was there. So just if you want to look at the filters, they're pretty straightforward. Um, it just has a default name and it's pretty much matching everything. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some policies first. And those policies are going to be, um, let's start off with um, IPSLA. Yeah. So we're going to need to monitor each of the firewalls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, um, what are we going to call this? L4, L7. Actually, you know what I'm going to call it? I'm going to call it. PBR IP SLA policy. And what I want to do is I want to change the frequency instead of 60 seconds because I don't want to have 60 times 3 uh, for it to detect a failure of the firewall. So I'm going to send it to a frequency of 1. So what this is going to do is going to issue uh, an ICMP uh, ping uh, every second. And then if it misses three pings, it's going to fail that member. Okay, so I'm going to submit that uh, IP SLA monitoring policy. And let's create, we're going to need to create health groups. So I'm going to create a health group for my pen 32.1 um, firewall. Okay. And I'm going to need to create another one. And I'm going to explain to you how, this, how these are used in a few minutes. So I have my Palo Alto 1 health group um, and my Palo Alto 2 health group. Okay, so I have my IP SLA, I have my health group, now I need to create my redirects. So, um, let me go back to my diagram here because I started designing the different naming convention. Um, oh, actually, I don't have the naming convention for the PBR, but I did take a note. Um, here we go. So. The PBR policy is going to call, be called Core uh, BRF um, East-West Firewall PBR. Um, you might wonder why I'm calling it Core VRF. Um, it's a good question. It doesn't make sense. So I'm going to call it SG uh, VRF East to West. Just copy that. So I'm going to paste that here. SG VRF East-West Firewall PBR. It's going to be a destination type of L3. I'm going to set the PBR IP SLA policy and uh, keep it at um, source IP destination IP prototype. This is basically the um, uh, the resilient hashing uh, requirement, I, I believe. And I'm going to enable resilient hashing. So um, let's see here. I'm going to now specify the two firewall IPs and MAC addresses um, as part of this policy-based redirect. So one of the requirements is obviously to get the IP addresses, and one of them is here, right? It's 100 and 200, right? So let me go back. And what I'm going to also need is the MAC address of the firewall. So I already performed this um, this configuration, or actually this lookup, and base. this is the uh, MAC address of the first firewall. 
And what I did was I just kind of logged in SSH into the, into the Palo Alto firewall, and I did a show interface Ethernet 1.1, uh, which is the one that's in scope, and it gave me the MAC address um, of that interface. So I'm going to copy that here. Um, actually, you know what? Let me, uh, let me prove that real quick because I want to make sure I have the correct one. Uh, this is this firewall. Go interface Ethernet one one. Oh, actually, it uses the um, this interface. So it's zero one one B C ten. Yep. So that's correct. So I already performed this. So I'm going to copy that interface MAC address. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this into that PAN 3021 health group, right? I'm going to do the same thing for the second firewall. And I have my cheat sheet here. So it's going to be 200, and here's the MAC address. And the putting this one actually into the PAN 3022 health group. So... I'm going to hit submit here. All right, so let's see what this looks like. So here's my SGPBR. Maybe here, let me make it smaller. There you go. So I kind of like putting descriptions for everything, but for now, I'm just kind of going to keep it uh, blank since uh, it's a lab environment. So I have my um, my IP addresses for both of the nodes, and then I also have the um, MAC addresses for both of the, the firewalls, right? And here's the, um, here is the uh, PBR configuration. All right, so now that I created my PBR, my health group, my IP SLA, um, I don't need to do anything else on the protocols, no. So what I'm going to do now is go under my services. So first thing I got to do is create my device. And again, it's going to be a cluster, right? Um, it can't be managed in this case, right? Because it's not supported. Let me go back to my diagram here. Um, so here is my device cluster name. And I don't know why I'm calling it core. Let me just change that. And that should be all. So here's my SGVRF cluster. I'm going to pop that name in here. And I'm going to set it to a firewall. Um, again, these are physicals. Nothing stopping me from using virtuals. Um, physicals, and they are on my uh, shared physical domain. I'm going to keep the context single, OK, um, and go to. And I'm, But I'm still going to configure it for a cluster. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to define the first firewall. So it'll be PAN3021. And the interfaces. So I'm just going to copy that. I know that it's interface 1.900. And I am plugging in on port 33 on this one. I hit OK. So I just created my, my first device, and I'm going to create my second device now. And this is going to be PAN2. PAN2. Um, Ethernet 1.900. And this one is going to plug in on port 34 update. OK. Uh, matches up nicely. Now I'm going to create my cluster interface. So I have two of my devices, right? And I am going to now, let me see. Here's my interface, firewall cluster interface. So I'm going to plug that in here. And I am going to select both of the Palo Alto interfaces. The VLAN that I'm using, as I mentioned before, is VLAN 900. I'm going to update that. So as you see here in this particular configuration, which might confuse some people on how to actually add the second node, 
is you define the cluster interface and you add both of the firewall interfaces as part of the cluster and you know make sure that the VLAN encapsulation matches. So in this case, my L4 to L7 device is complete. So I'm going to hit finish here. Um, one thing that you should probably expect is when you click on it, you're going to have this nice little uh, fault, but don't worry because it's going to get cleared. You see here it's already uh, soaking and clearing, so that's going to be going away. This, this is going to be uh, prepped and ready to go. So the next thing I want to do is I need to create my service graph template. Okay, so I'm going to right click here on service graph templates and I am going to copy this name here, which is one arm firewall PBR to keep it uh, straightforward. So it's going to be one arm firewall PBR and all I'm going to do is drag and drop that the, the L4, L7 device that I just previously created. I am going to set this for routed and route redirect. Okay, those are one of the requirements here for uh, policy-based routing. I'm going to click Submit. All right, so I'm going to click Submit here. And now my service graph template is deployed, or actually it's configured, right? Okay, so what I'm go going to need to do is deploy this service graph template. Right. Um, before I deploy it, let me go to my uh, vSphere environment. So my vSphere environment, um, I have my web app and database um, applications. So here I have it already open for app. I'm going to show you CMD that app. What's app? So app is here. App right now, um, it is. I don't believe it has any contract. Let's just confirm that. So let me go to app. It's going to be my guinea pig. All right, so app has no contract, okay? So um, if you recall, app can is part of the VZNE, right? So it can actually connect out to the WAN and, and maybe even ping, you know, a Google DNS server or something. We're going to try that but it won't be able to connect to either web or database, right? So I'm going to try to ping 146 here uh, to prove that. Let's go to here. So if I do ping 172.30.125.146, which is the database, I'm not going to get any response, right? Because I have no contract with it. Um, kill that. But if I ping the internet, it should work. And it does. Okay. So this is basically the when um, when out contract that is uh, provided uh, through the VZNE uh, uh, functionality. Um, VZNE, um, uh, basically any EPG classification. So um, let's go to let's go deploying. Let's go deploy the service graph. So what I'm going to do here. I'm going to create the VZNE to VZNE. I'm going to deploy that uh, service graph. Um, and then what's going to happen is, in that case, app is going to be able to talk to the database. But that traffic is going to go through the firewall first. Okay. So let's look at the firewalls first, actually, now that I'm mentioning that. Um, all right. So what you're seeing here is the ICMP. Right, so remember we created those IP SLAs. Here are the the um, the uh, IP SLA um, um, like response uh, the the ping requests going into the firewall just to make sure that the firewall is alive. Right, so that's this traffic here. Uh, let me see if I can get to the other firewall. That should be here. So here's the other firewall, and you get the same. Um, oh, sorry. Here we go. Um, and here we go. So um, the the switches are pinging the um, destinations of the, the actual firewall just to make sure that it's alive. Okay. So let's go back to the ACI fabric, and let's deploy that service graph. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click on apply L4 L7 service graph template. 
and we're going to select uh, from the consumer, we're going to select the any EPG, which is VZ any, any EPG to any EPG. We're going to select the existing contract because I already created it and I'll, you know, I want to kind of keep it straightforward. So I'm going to use the firewall inspect contract with the redirect subject and I'm going to click next. When I click next, here are some important, very important configurations that I need to um, make. So the first thing is um, I need to specify my service bridge domain, right? Don't get confused if you put EPG to EPG and you put the wrong um, bridge domain for the EPG. In this case, um, I am using a service bridge domain, so I'm going to specify it here as the consumer, right? And again, because it's a one arm, it's a single interface, both the consumer and the provider are the same interface. And I make those changes here. So I'm going to click SG service bridge domain um, as part of the consumer connector, right? I'm also going to specify the redirect policy. So that is the SG VRF East West firewall PBR. And I'm not going to worry about service EPG here because it doesn't really apply. And I'm going to select that cluster interface. So it's going to be firewall cluster 01 interface that I created previously under the device. As for the provider connector, it's going to be the same, right? Because it's a single, as I mentioned. So again, we're going to use the service bridge domain again. Let me just uncheck these L3 destination VIPs because they don't apply. Um, the redirect policy is going to be the same policy, right? And then uh, my cluster interface, um, which would be here, firewall cluster 01 interface, right? So again, I'm going to use the same configuration for both the consumer as the provider, uh, pretty much keeping it uh, straightforward. Now I'm going to finish this. This is going to actually deploy the service graph template, right? So as you see here, my device selection policies, okay? Um, here is the, open this up, here's my um, device selection policy with my consumer and provider matching, right? So here's the redirect policy uh, focusing on the bridge domain and it's going to be the same for the provider as well, okay? Um, and then what has been deployed? So as far as the service graph uh, that has been deployed, um, here it is. So Cisco kind of, uh, ACI kind of concatenates it. So here's my firewall inspect contract followed by the service graph uh, template name. So one arm firewall PBR01 followed by SGVRF, okay? Um, and then it's using VLAN 900 for the consumer and provider. And here's the firewall cluster interface um, that it's uh, consuming, okay? If I scroll up to the actual apps EPG under contract, you're going to notice um, that it still doesn't have a contract now that I'm thinking about it. What I should actually do is look at the VRF because it's a VZNE to VZNE, as I, as I mentioned. So I'm going to go to networking, um, VRF, and EPG collection for VRF, and here it is, right? So we have the uh, firewall inspect as a provide and a consume, okay? And if I go to my app, uh, my uh, what do you call it? My application. I'm going to try to ping that 146, which is the database. As you see here, previously request was uh, timed out. I'm going to click it, and now I'm able to communicate. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to send a number of pings here. Let it kind of go through. Okay. And let's go to the Palo Alto. Let's see which Palo Alto is actually receiving that traffic. So we're going to go to Palo Alto 1. Refresh that. Oh, here it is. So I'm going to do, um, I'm actually going to, well, I was going to do a filter, but I don't need to because it's, it's pretty simple. So here's the traffic, and, and, and you see here it's, it's starting to kind of log it. So uh, 125, 138 is the app server and it's pinging the 146. So that ICMP traffic is also now being redirected to the firewall for inspection. And obviously what I can do in my, with my Palo Alto or, you know, I mean, it really doesn't even have to be a Palo Alto. It could be a Cisco ASA, it could be a, a Fortinet, it could be, you know, a source fire, whatever. Uh, I can start controlling this traffic and I can block it if, if need be. 
So um, that is basically that communication traffic flow. Now, what I also want to show is in my in my diagram here, um, I wanted to make sure that web can talk to the database but not go through the firewall. So again, I apply this DB services con between web and database. And I believe I still have it in here. Let me, uh, let me go to verify that. So web as uh, yep, web is consuming the DB services contract and then the database is providing the DB services contract, okay? So technically, if I log into my web server right now, let me go to the web server, which is here. All right. I'm going to go run command. Um, first, I'm going to stop this ping so that it doesn't make too much noise. And I'm going to go to the web server. And if you recall, on the web server, if I, in this case, ping the database server of 146, it's going to come from 130, um, that traffic will not be seen on the firewall because it's not, uh, it's not going to be redirecting that traffic flow to the firewall. So here it is, ping 172.30.125.146, which is the database. And I'm just going to run um, an endless ping on it. Let me kind of collect some uh, packets here, and I'm going to go to the apps. Oops. Uh, Palo Alto. So let me go to the first Palo Alto. Uh, I'm going to refresh it. You're going to notice that there is no traffic sourced from the 130 to the 146, right? As you see here, I'm only now seeing the uh, IPSLA traffic, right? I have to refresh it. Nothing, right? So this Palo Alto is definitely not receiving that those those packets. And I'm going to go to the, the secondary Palo Alto now, which is right here. And I'm going to refresh that. And as you see here, this Palo Alto is only just receiving the IPSLA traffic and nothing else. Okay. So that kind of proves that the EPG to EPG contract um, is preferred over the VZNE to VZNE and redirection to the Palo Alto. So I effectively create a bypass. And it's basically, for example, maybe... And there was a use case where web had to do a backup to database, uh, and that traffic I don't want to I don't want it to go through a firewall and, and bottleneck it. So I would create a separate contract, um, only specifying specific backup ports, and allow that to kind of bypass the firewall altogether. Right? So it's a slick method. And again, um, let me prove that the web connected to the internet is also um, not going through the firewall, that it's just using this WAN out contract, so it will classify it as this VZNE, and because it's an EPG to VZNE, has, is more preferred over a VZNE to VZNE. Again, it all comes down to the contract priorities um, and how the, how, what the actual switch does, um, which policy it actually is going to execute upon. So let me go to, um, let me go back to the uh, web server as an example. And in this case, I'm going to try pinging the internet. Okay, so it is pinging. Let it kind of generate a couple packets, and then I'm going to go check both Palo Alto firewalls, and I'm going to prove that they're not seeing any, any traffic flows. So here's the first Palo Alto. As you see here, no noise other than the IPSLA. And then let's go to the second Palo Alto. As you see here, there's no 4222 as a destination either. So kind of proving that there's no traffic that's actually um, being forwarded to the Palo Alto firewalls. All right. Okay, let me do a quick failover test uh, real quick. Um, so let me jump on the web server here. Let me kill that. And let me go back to the app server. And let me run a... Uh, run an endless ping again, right? So we know for a fact that this traffic is actually hashed to Palo Alto Firewall 1, which is this guy, right? Let me wait until those packets come back, refresh it. Okay, so you see here the traffic, the dot 138 going to 146. This is that um, app to database communication. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to be on this firewall. I'm going to be checking. Um, you know, the, this ping is going through. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down the interface of the Palo Alto just to prove that the traffic now goes to the other Palo Alto, right? The failover uh, because of the, the rehashing, okay? So let me go to this firewall. I'm just going to network. I'm going to do a very, very simple test. I'm going to click on the interface, and I'm going to shut it down. Okay. I'm going to hit commit. Let me see. Let me try to do this quickly. Commit that. It's going to take a couple seconds to apply. And then in a couple of seconds, you're going to see a disruption in traffic. Again, the IP SLA is going to kick in. Um, it's going to fail the firewall. And then um, it's going to fail over to the other firewall. Or it's going to get rehashed to the other firewall. So let's wait for it. There it goes. It's dying. So there's my three seconds. There you go. So look at this. I, I basically lost two, two pings, right? Because I believe Windows is two ICMPs per for ping or something like that, I forget. But anyway, um, now this traffic is basically going to the other firewall. So let's prove that. Let me go to the other firewall, which is Palo Alto 2, and let's refresh this. Ah, you see here? So now the secondary firewall, the, the dot 200 firewall, is receiving that traffic, okay? So this kind of proves that, that failover functionality. Let's go back to the other firewall. Um, not this guy, this guy, and let's bring that firewall interface back up. Auto, commit. And from an application standpoint, we should see the, the fail back. Actually, it should fail back without any disruption. Right, because failback is always pretty smooth. It's the failovers that are um, a little disruptive, but that's with any protocol, really. Let me just make sure that you know, it completed here, um, and I could just check here, and you see here the, the the traffic flow is already returning to the primary firewall because that's where the hash uh, wanted to go. Let me just. There it goes. So um, that's about it, guys. I hope that this was, um, you know, helpful for anyone that was trying to deploy um, one-arm service graphs. And you know, it it it, it seems it seems confusing, um, but it's it's really not. Um, and it's, the configuration is pretty straightforward, as you, as you saw. Uh, oh, one thing. Let me kind of remove it to show you what the removal process looks like. It's that's pretty simple as well. So what I'm going to do is go back in here, right? And um, as you recall, the IP inspect contracts are there. All, when I want to remove this policy, all I have to do is go to services, um, click on the service graph template, right click, remove related objects, right? I'm going to target the actual uh, contract and then the VZNE. And in this case, I'm going to click Remove Related Device Selection Policies and Remove EPGs Only. Okay. So I'm going to hit Submit here. Okay. And this should uh, remove the actual deployed graph instance, the device selection policies, kind of bringing it back uh, to the beginning. And that communication flow should be um, stopped right now. So as you also notice that under the VRF for uh, VZNE to VZNE, the contract is also removed um, from the, the VZNEs. And if I go back to my application, oh look, the communication has stopped because the service graph was interrupted. All right. All right. So that pretty much concludes the, uh, the service graph uh, lab with a single interface one on firewall with symmetric PBR. I hope again, this was uh, helpful. Um, and if you found that this uh, video was informative, um, definitely subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have uh, some, some more content coming up. So thank you guys for your time. Bye-bye.